Howdy y'all, this is Grey Ghost 55. I'm coming back with another Bible video. Or maybe I should say more like our weekly Bible video. Change up some. <laughs> but I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've been enjoying the other videos that I've managed to somehow get posted. That is rare. <laughs> but I hope you have been enjoying them. And... When I didn't get a chance, I try to get it, get some content out there. <laughs> but uh, if you're new to this part of the channel, we once a week go through a section of the Bible per its reading plan of the Old King James Version. Uh, this is kind of my way to give back to God. He blesses me with all these. Uh, things in my life, these the these good things for me. Like a good home, food on the table, my friends and my family. These are all blessings from the Lord. And the channel. I mean everything that I can put up, I know he allows me to put up. If he didn't want it, it wouldn't be here. But without further ado, we look through this and we try to glean as much knowledge and love from the Lord, from the Bible, with each with each episode. So without further ado, let's see what happens with David next in this chapter of 1 Samuel. Let's see, 1 Samuel chapter 21. Then David came to Nob, to Ammonach the priest. And Ammonach was afraid at the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ammonach the priest, The king has commanded me a business, and has said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is a hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yet though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hollowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants with Saul was there that day detained before the Lord, and his name was Dog. An Edomite, the chiefest of the heart of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said to Almanac, And is there not here under thy hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Allah, Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take it, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, is not this David the king of the land? Did they, did they not sing one 
to another of him and dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Echish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Akesh unto his servant, Lo, see, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in, in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Chapter 22 David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mezpah of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came to the force of Herod. For Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gabay, under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of ye fields and vineyards, and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me? And there is none that showeth me that my son has made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me, or showeth me showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me, to lie in wait as at this day. Then answered Dog the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ammonite the son of Etub. And he inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king set to call Amonek the priest, the son of Edom, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Edom. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse? In that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should arise, should rise against me to lie in wait, as at this day. Then Almanac answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law? and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. Did I, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Almanac, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew 
when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Dog, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Dog, the Edomite, turned, and he fell upon the priest and slew on the day on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Noah, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Almanac, the son of Ethel, named Arbathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said unto Abathar, I knew it that day when Dog the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Chapter 23 Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Caleb, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Caleb. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Caleb against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Caleb, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David and his men went to Caleb and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle, and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Caleb. And it came to pass, when Abathar the son of Almanac fled to David, to Caleb, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Caleb, and Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. And Saul called the, all the people together to war to go down to Caleb and besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, Thy servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Caleb to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Caleb deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant, the Lord said he will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Caleb deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Caleb, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Caleb, and he forbore to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness and strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, rose arose and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, 
and that also saw my father Noah. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came the Ziphites to Saul to Gabay, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Halakai, which is on the south of Jeshman? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all, but all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know and see his place where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there. For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore to, and take knowledge of all the lurking places. where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain on the south of Jeshman. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David wherefore he came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on, his, on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to go get, to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from after pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selah Hamakoth. And David went up from thence and dwelt in the strongholds of En Gideon. Chapter 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from the following his Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And it came to Pat, and it came to the sheep cots by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. The Lord anointed to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his, ser his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked up, looked behind him, David stopped, stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? 
Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the, that the Lord hath delivered thee into today into my hand in the cave. And some bade, bade me kill thee, but my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will put not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father see, yes, yeah, see the skirt of thy robe in my, in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know that, know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. And the Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. After whom the king of Israel came at, come out? After whom does thou pursue? After a long, after a dead dog, after a flea. The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thy hand. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that, ha that thou hast done unto me this day. And behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the king of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that, the, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swear unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got up, got them up unto the hold. Chapter 25 And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and laminated, and buried him in the house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in uh, Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now that the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding, and of a beautiful continuance. But the man was churlish to e and evil in his tongues, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep, and David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in all my splendor. Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to, to him that liveth in prosperity, 
Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now let thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel, asked the young men, and they showed thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we. For we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh into cometh to thy hand unto thy servants and unto thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I take me, take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And went up after David about four hundred men and two hundred abode by the stuff. Verse 5. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and they were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and day, and all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider that thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail, Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two hundred bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisin and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servant, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told her husband, she told not her husband Nabal, and it was so as she rode on the ass that she came down by the covert on the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed, and all that pertained unto him. And he has requ requited me evil for good. Go and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him in the morning, like that any passes down against the wall. And when Ab Abigail saw David, she hastened and light lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face 
and bowed herself to the ground. And he fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray ye, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, he is he, so is he, Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But thine handmaid saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord has withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid has brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee forgiveness, the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and the evil has not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thy enemies. Them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a slain. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all that the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord either that thou hast shed blood causeless or that the Lord has avenged himself but when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord then remember thine handmaid and David said to Abigail blessed be God of Israel which sent thee this day to meet me and blessed be thy advice and blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. For in, for in very deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which has kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hastened and come to meet me. Surely there, is, there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any of that passes against the wall. So David received on her hand that which she had brought to brought him, and said unto her, Go in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and I have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was very merry with him, within him. For he was very drunken, wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after the Lord smote Nabal, he died, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that has pleaded the cause of, of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servants from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to make her 
to him a to him wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spoke unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of his servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her, and she went after the messengers of David. And because his wife, David also took Abraham or Anon of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Michael his daughter, David's wife, to Faulty, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. Chapter 26. And the Zephites came unto Saul to Gabay, saying, does not David hide himself in the hill of Pachula, which is before Geshman? Then Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Pachula, which is before Geshman, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. And David therefore set out spies, and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched, and David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host, and Saul lay in the trench. And the people pitched around about him. Then answered David and said to Amalek the Hittite and to Abisha the son of Zerai, both brother to Job, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by the night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear struck, stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God has delivered thine enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abisha, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the, and the cruise of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awake. For they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of the hill far off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that Christ to the king? And David said to Abner, are not thou a valiant man, and who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there comes one of the people in to, de in to destroy the king thy lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, 
ye are worthy to die because ye have not kept your master the Lord's anointed and now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water that was at his bolster and Saul knew David's voice and said is this thy voice my son David and David said it is my voice O my lord O king and he said wherefore does my lord thus pursue after his servant for what have I done or what evil is in my hand now therefore I pray thee let my lord the king hear the words of this servant if the Lord has stirred thee up against me let him accept an offering but if they be the children of men curse be they before the Lord for they have driven me out this day for from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord saying go serve other gods now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord for the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea as when one doeth hunt a partridge in the mountains then Saul then said Saul I have sinned return my son David for I will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day Behold, I have played the fool, and I have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David, thou, hat, thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way. And Saul returned to his place. And that, my friends, concludes these chapters of 1 Samuel. Boy, it was touch and go there. Old Saul was after David. It was only cause of the Lord that he managed to remain a step ahead. Kind of interesting to see how this ends. But my friends, it's getting dark out. The Lord signed the turns. Time for bed. <laughs> but everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you do like this kind of content and little other things like you see on the channel, please like, uh, share, and subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, though above all else all glory goes to God and if you haven't thought about or are you at least still thinking about accepting Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior please do the tribulations are hard but the reward is so worth it you all have a great uh, weekend and may the Lord be with you all this is Grey Ghost 55 out.